Thank you for clicking on that thumbnail and watching this video. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel. Share this video with your friends and motivate me to make many more videos like this. Thank you very much. This is the solution video of uh, paper 1-3 of Additional Mathematics IGCSE Summer 2022. Question number 1A. Find the rational numbers A, B and C such that the first three terms in descending order, descending order, okay? This is important to understand, descending order of x in the expansion of this can be written as this one. So whenever they say descending order, that means the one which is which has higher exponent. Uh, we can say that uh, th there is 3x squared one term and minus 1 over 9x second term. Which one has higher exponent? Of course, obviously this is 2 and this can be written as x to the power minus 1. So 2 is more. That means this will have more exponent in the first uh, term of expansion. So what will be the first term of expansion? There, there is 5 here which is uh, the highest exponent. So 5c0, right? So give 0, this 0 exponent to minus 9, 1 over 9x. That's how the maximum exponent will go to 3x square. So their sum should be 5. So 0 plus 5 is 5, this, this 0 and this 0 must match. Second term will go up by 1, it will be 5c1 and similarly the exponent of minus 1 over 9x will also go up by 1 but 3x square exponent will go down by 1. The sum of these exponents must always be 5 equal to this number. And I'm writing the third one, obviously it will be 5c2 minus 1 over 9x and uh, 2 here and you guessed it right, 3 here. And now we'll just expand this and we'll get some ex some uh, coefficients. 5c0 will be 1. This is also 1. But 3 to the power 5 is 243. So this power 5 is with both 3 as well as x squared. So we'll apply to both. x squared to the power 5 will be x to the power 10. And look at the first term. It is x to the power 10. So we are matching. Very good. 5c1 is 5 minus 1 over 9x power 1 will keep it 1 over 9x 3 to the power 4 is 81 and then we'll have x to the power 8 here we have x to the power 7 but look this x will make it x to the power 7 so let's cancel this and this 8 will become 7 next 5c2 is 10 then we have minus 1 over 9x squared. This is square will make this negative, positive. It did not change here, but it will change here. 1 over 81 x squared. Every part is squared. And then 3 cube is 27. And x squared cube is uh, x plus 6. Again, these two x's will cancel with two of these. So we'll be left with only four, which matches again with this. So what do we get here? 243 x to the power 10. And here, uh, 9 and 81 will also cancel. So 9 times 4, 5, 45, negative 45 x to the power 7. And here, 27 and uh, 81 cancel. So 10 over 3 plus 10 over 3 x to the power so we got our values now a is 243 b is negative 45 and c is 10 over 3 we got our answers let's see what is the second part hence that means take the help of the answer in the first part hence find the coefficient of x to the power 4 in the expansion of this. So whenever they say hence, that means use what you got earlier. So I'm going to use this one. So I will copy it here. Let me copy it here. Here my B part is starting, okay? 243 
x to the power 10 minus 45 x to the power 7 plus 10 over 3 x to the power 4 and now this one has a square here right so I will use this identity and there is a positive here so I will use a plus b whole square the expansion of a plus b whole square is a square plus b square plus 2ab this is how this identity looks like that's what we're going to use here for us a is 1 so 1 square b is 1 over x cube so 1 over x cube square plus 2 times a b and now we will uh, let's let's expand this uh, right side first so we'll copy the first one as it is 243 x to the power 10 minus 45 x to the power 7 plus 10 over 3 x to the power 4 1 square is 1 plus 1 square is 1 x cube square will be x power 6 plus 2 times 1 times 1 is 2 divided by x cube now we have to focus on x to power 4 let's see if I multiply this with any one of these three which will give me x to the power 4 and this because it has 10 this has 6 10 minus 6 is 4 so they are multiplied we'll get x to the power 4 so 243 x to the power 10 multiplied by 1 over x to the power 6 by rule of expansion this should multiply with others two also but they won't they won't give us x to the power 4 so I'm ignoring that part okay now 45 x to the power 7 what should I multiply this with so that I get an x to the power 4 and you guessed it right again this one because 7 minus 3 is 4 so 2 over x cube plus and already we have an x4 here 10 to the 10 over 3 x to the power 4 times 1 they'll give us x power 4 now we will expand this and simplify so this part is going to cancel 6 and 10 we're left with 4 so this one is 243 x to the power 4 straightforward minus this 3 will cancel with 7 and will be left with 4 45 times 2 90 and then we have 10 over 3 x to the power 4 all of them are x to the power 4 so we can simply uh, simplify that so 243 minus 90 will be 153 plus 10 over 3 x to the power 4 okay this if I multiply here 459 over 3 x to the power 4 so what I did I gave it a uh, denominator 3 and also multiply by 3 so basically I multiplied by 1 but it looked it uh, changed the look it did not change the mm, expression it is remain same and now both of them have same denominator we can simply add them we get 400 69 over 3 x to the power 4 question was hence find the coefficient of x to the power 4 so you can write coefficient of x to the power 4 is 469 over 3 okay question number 2 is our circular measure in this question all lengths are in centimeters and all angles are in radians okay the diagram shows a circle of center O radius R8 keep in mind this is also a radius because here also the center is being connected with the circumference so they are also 8 the point ABC lie on the circumference okay I can see that the chord AB has a length of 10 we can see that okay show that the angle B A B O A B O A this one is 1.35 correct to two decimal places all right so we can use here cosine rule why because 
we know three sides of a triangle and we want to find one angle between two sides and for that cosine rule is the best so uh, o will be a little confusing let me call this corner as uh, a b and do we have c here d let's call it d so i want to find angle d here this one okay and uh, i will take help of 8 8 and 10 our cosine rule says that a square equal to b square plus c square minus 2bc cos a this alphabet and this alphabet must match but we want cos d so we will change our this equation according to our situation so we will write cos d here and in place of a square we will write small d square and what are we left with other two sides are a and b so a square plus b square minus 2ab cos d this will be the uh, cosine rule we will be using not this one because our corner angle is d all right so d the side opposite to angle d is this 10 so this will become small d side 8 is 8 square and 8 square minus 2 times 8 times 8 cos d so 100 64 and 64 128 minus 8 times 8 is 64 128 cos d and let's bring the number to the side 100 minus 128 equal to negative 128 cos d negative 28 equal to negative 128 cos d so now we want to isolate d so let's divide this side by 128 negative and negative 128 which cancels here these negatives cancel here so cos d equal to 28 over 128 which gives us d equal to cos inverse 28 over 128 and I'm pretty sure it will be 1.35 radians correct to two decimal places you can check it yourself all right what next given that the minor arc BC has a length of 18 find angle BOC length 18 okay so they want us to find BOC this one what is this if this one this length is 18 BC arc okay so if we want to find an angle from uh, an arc what is the formula we'll use we'll use this one arc length is R theta the angle we want and radius is given to us arc is given to us arc is 18 radius is 8 and that will be theta so theta becomes 18 over 8 right and that comes out to be our 8 times 2 is 16.25 radians that's straightforward what else is straightforward is subscribing to my channel I would request you to subscribe so that I make many more videos like this for you okay so they're saying in C part find the area of the minor sector AOC okay we need to go to the drawing again minor sector AOC this one all right so let me tell you my plan my plan is that angle BOA is known to us they have given it already or we found it 1.35 we just found BOC also 2.25 let's add these two it will be how much 3.6 radians total is 2 pi isn't it the whole circle uh, the angle at O will be 2 pi so angle uh, AOC will be 2 pi minus 3.6 please don't confuse with 360 degrees okay this is radians so 2 pi is radians minus 3.6 will be the area of AOC and they want 
the area of this minor sector AOC. So 2 pi minus 3.6 we go, we're going to use. Okay. So what is the area of a sector? It is half theta r square. It is given in your formula sheet. Right? And we know everything now. Area will be half theta we just got 2 pi minus 3.6 multiplied by the radius square so 2 and 64 we can cancel 32 so it comes out with 32 times 2 pi minus 3.6 okay let me use my calculator for this when I used it I got uh, 85 Point nine units square moving on this is find the exact solution of this special equation which is exponential equation so we can see that e is the base in both so somehow let's make it equal to e to power 3x which is in both okay let me change the look of this one so can I write this as 2 as 2 but e to the power 6x it, I will write it e to the power 3x square that becomes e to the power 6x minus 3 to the power 3 e to the power 3x minus 5 equal to 0 now we have e to the power 3x here e to the power 3x here let e to the power 3x equal to some alphabet um so 2m square minus 3m minus 5 equal to 0 and it becomes a quadratic equation straightforward. And I will solve it by using a factoring method. You can use your calculators or quadratic formula. Uh, I'll do it. 2 times 5 is 10. So yeah, 2m square minus 5m plus 2m minus 5 equal to 0. So m is the only common thing here. 2m minus 5 plus 1. 2m minus 5 equal to 0. 2m minus 5 is common in both. 2m minus 5 and m plus 1 equal to 0. So we get two answers from this because both are multiplying equal to 0. That means either of them is equal to 0. So I'll put both of them one by one separately equal to zero so it gives us m equal to five over two this gives m equal to minus one that means e to the power 3x that was m is equal to five over two because we should go back to x m was our creation we uh, assumed it we cannot give our answer to in that format so we have to change it now e is a positive uh, constant no matter what exponent we give to it, it will never give you a negative number. So this one is not possible. Reject this answer. This one is the only answer possible. And that's what we will focus on. e to the power 3x equal to 5 over 2. Our purpose is to solve by isolating x. So this e must go. Whenever we remove e from one side, the exponent becomes a complete uh, number and uh, the other side becomes the natural log. And now we'll divide this by 3 and divide here also by 3. x is 1 over 3 natural log. 2.5 you can write or 5 over 2. They said exact? Yes, they said exact. Though 2.5 would also be exact solution, but you can write this one. Okay, next one. Again, exponential simultaneous equations this time. In this we have two variables x and y and we have same base again. Whenever two uh, exponential expressions are dividing with same base, we can subtract the exponents. So it will become 4x minus 7 minus 5x plus 7y. So I subtracted is equal to and because they are e this is a this is a let's write it e to the power minus 2 1 over e square can be written as this since both sides have same base we can ignore i'm not cancelling it but i'm ignoring them 
we can equate exponents straight away whenever same same base is on both sides okay so 4x minus 7 minus 5x minus 7y is equal to negative 2 so what equation it gives us 4x minus 5x is negative x negative 7y and uh, equal to this goes there becomes positive 7 so positive 7 minus 2 5 this becomes equation number 1 and we have another equation here x y equal to negative 18 that's what I can write this as so I can uh, isolate this x let me do that so let me bring 5 to this side and x to the other side it becomes negative 7y negative 5 equal to positive x this one has been transformed to this one x isolated which I will substitute here negative 7y negative 5 or times y equal to negative 18 so what do we get here negative 7y square negative 5y and if I bring 18 to the left side it becomes a quadratic equation but it doesn't look good this is negative let's change the whole sign of whole equation so 7y square plus 5y negative 18 I change the sign of all to make it the leading one positive it will be fun to factor this it would be difficult with the negative a little confusing sometimes okay so 18 times 7 is 126 and uh, we have 5 here we need a difference of 5 so we can do 9 and 14 yes right how I how, how I dis, uh, decided on 9 and 14 look 7 and negative 18 we have two corners right I broke this into 9 and 2 right so that I can 7 and 18 they don't have a difference of 5 so I keep this 9 here and take this 2 multiply with 7 it becomes 14 and 9 for you some of you it may be very heavy to understand what I did here in that case you can just use quadratic formula for this and you get it but how I mentally did it that's what I'm explaining to you so I'm using 14 and 9 7 y square plus 14 y minus 9 y minus 18 equal to 0 7 y is common here so y plus 2 minus 9 is common here y plus 2 equal to 0 7 y minus 9 y plus 2 equal to 0 this is just like what happened in previous question a quadratic equation so we got two answers here 7 y minus 9 equal to 0 y plus 2 equal to 0 y equal to positive 9 over 7 y equal to minus 2 so what was the question question was solve that means we found y but we have to find x as well so let's find x for this case okay so what was our relationship let me use x y equal to negative 18 this one that looks easy x okay for x this is what we're doing for x okay so x y x y equal to minus 18 this is what we're using y we know now so x times 9 over 7 is equal to negative 18 and we can cross multiply 7 goes and multiply 9 goes down okay x equal to negative 18 times 7 over 9 this and this cancel negative 2 negative 2 times 7 negative 14 okay so this is the first combination first answer uh, our answer x equal to negative 14 y is 9 over 7 what about this one I'll use the same thing x y equal to negative 18 x y equal to negative 18 divide both sides by negative 2 which is 9 so second set of answer is x equal to 9 y equal to minus 2 okay question number 4 variable x and y are such that e to the power 4y is plotted against x is a straight line e to the power 
four y will be here and it is plotted against x will get a straight line with two fifth so m of this is two fifth gradient is two fifth passing through ten two so let's say this is ten two point find y in terms of x okay so we know the equation of a straight line is y equal to mx plus c or y minus y1 equal to m x minus x1 okay now since they have already said that it is e to the power 4y against x that means x remains x this one but this one y will not be y anymore it will be e to the power 4y in place of y now we will substitute a point 10 to in this and we'll get the answer so e to the power 4y minus y1 y1 x1 are the coordinates of the specific point and y1 is 2 in this case e equal to m they have given 2 fifth and x is x but this one is 10 and that's what we have to simplify we have to isolate this y here okay so let's open everything else so keep e to the power 4y here and this 2 also comes there so 2 fifth of x minus 2 fifth of 10 will be 4 yeah and then we have this minus 2 comes here on the right side becomes positive 2 okay so e to the power 4y equal to 2 to the 2 of 5x minus 2 now we have to get y in terms of x so that means this e must go and in one of the previous question we did the same thing we removed e and the exponent remains this but the other one becomes the natural log 2 over 5x minus 2 okay now we have to get rid of this 4 also so let's divide here by 4 and we get 1 over 4 here okay let's complete it here 4 and 4 cancel y equal to 1 fourth okay natural log 2 over 5 x minus 2 okay that would be the answer what about the b part find the value of y when x is 45 so let's do it here only because we have to take help of this one so find y so we'll find y equal to one fourth of natural x 2 over 5 x is 45 and then minus 2 so 5 and 45 will get us 9 so y equal to 1 fourth ln how much 2 times 9 18 18 minus 2 is 16 okay now simpler form can also be achieved by y equal to this one fourth which is a coefficient will go and become the exponent of 16 that's the logarithmic law so 16 to the power one fourth that is fourth root of 16 and fourth root of 16 is just 2 so y is natural log 2 when x is 45 let's move on to see part find the values for of x for which y can be defined find the values of x for which y can be defined so we have to look at this equation again let me copy this one fourth natural log two fifth x minus two okay let me write here y equal to one fourth natural log two fifth x minus 2 this was the one right we want uh, the values of x for which y is defined so let's let's put this again as the exponent so it becomes y equal to natural log i didn't put the bracket wrong way okay natural log 2 fifth x minus 2 to the power 1 fourth now natural log of 0 
and below is not possible. If you uh, remember the graph of a natural log or any log is like this. Right? It goes through one here and it is always coming closer to the y-axis but never touching it. That means the value where x is equal to 0 and x is below 0, both of them are not defined. That means x is less than equal to 0 is not defined, right? That is this whole thing is x for us now because this is inside natural log. 2 fifth of x minus 2 should not be, or should always be rather, we should go, go the positive way. So can be defined they're saying. So they're not saying not defined. So more than 0. It has to be x greater than 0 this way, right? And for us, this is x to the power 1 fourth. Let's uh, make all, both of them, for power 4 here, power 4 here. So we get what? 2 fifth x minus 2 is uh, greater than 0. So this inequality we can solve now, greater than 2. Cross multiply, there's nothing, no negative, so there's no change in sign. So 5 will multiply here. x is greater than 5 times 2 divided by 2. 2 and 2 cancel. x is greater than 5. This is the value of x for which y is defined. It is possible to find a value of y for this. Let's move on to question number 5. What are they saying here? The velocity v meter per second of a particle moving in a straight line t seconds after passing a fixed point O. Suppose this is the point O and it is moving in this direction is given by this v equal to 6 sine 3t. Find the time at which the acceleration of the particle is first equal to minus 9 meter per second. They say first because it's a sine cosine right? trigonometric uh, function. So trigonometric function keeps on repeating itself. So they're saying when is it first negative 9. Suppose there's a negative 9 here. So when is it negative 9? So acceleration to find acceleration from velocity equation, we will differentiate it. So acceleration is nothing but dv over dt in this case. So differentiation of 6, we will not touch it because it's multiplying. So we'll just focus on sine 3t. And differentiation is cos 3t multiplied by the differentiation of angle. And differentiation of 3t with respect to t will be just 3. So it is 18 cos 3t. And they said it is equal to negative 9. So negative 9 in place of acceleration. Divide this by 18. Divide this by 18. Negative half is equal to cos 3t. Cos 3t is negative. That means it can be negative. Cos is negative, right? It is in this quadrant or this quadrant it is negative. So first they're saying, so we'll find this angle. So let's find this and this acute angle to find this angle. So 3t equal to cos inverse negative half. Since I know that in second quadrant cos is negative for the first time, I will not put cos inverse negative half in my calculator. I will put cos inverse just half because I have already decided the quadrant and it is pi by uh, half, right? Pi by 3. So this is the angle which is our answer now. This angle from 0. We always can count from 0. So uh, this is pi up to here but this angle here is pi by 3 less than pi. So 3t is equal to pi minus pi by 3. So 3t is how much? 3 pi minus pi, 2 pi over 3. And now we can get 3 by divided by 3, divided by 3. And uh, what do we get here? 3 and 3 cancel. t is 2 pi over 9. Are they saying exact time? They're not. Okay. Or you can convert it to decimal. Let me convert to decimal 2 pi over 9. In three significant figures, it will be 0 0.698. Okay, next, find the displacement of the particle from 0 to t 
t equal to 5.6 displacement they have used they have made our job easy whenever displacement is said even if it is uh, suppose it is uh, taking a turn right in between somewhere we don't have to bother about that we just have to know the distance between the starting point and the ending point that will be displacement and for that we can just simply integrate the velocity equation which is this one so let me integrate uh, this thing when t is 5.6 from o which is time is 0 at time t equal to 0 it is at o so from here we'll find the displacement 5.6 seconds and uh, 6 let me write 6 outside 6 sine 3t dt okay so what do we get here 6 the integration of sine 3t is negative let me put negative outside cos 3t in differentiation we multiplied by 3 here we divided by 3 so I'm dividing it outside so that this becomes easy for me 0 to 5.6 and we'll just substitute these numbers now negative 6 over 2 will be negative 6 over 3 will be negative 2 and cos 3 5.6 and uh, minus C and C will get cancelled so I'm ignoring C cos 3 times 0 okay so it comes out to minus 2 15 16.8 yeah cos 16.8 minus cos 0 cos 0 is 1 let's see what is cos 16 point eight negative zero point four six zero six so negative two times uh, both are negative so negative one point four six zero six and if I multiply by two both of them it becomes positive two point nine two meters yes meters 920 9212 but I'm writing three significant figures only okay question number six they have given a table it is given that fx this is the same as fx right just read it fx is a quadratic parabolic function where x is greater than zero all right so let me try to visualize this 2x square will be very little narrower it is like this equal to and greater than 0 means left side has been ignored and gx is 2x plus 1 a straight line whose y-intercept is 1 and uh, it will look something like this okay each of the expressions in the table can be written as one of the following all right there are how many 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 and they are 1 2 3 four five six okay let me uh, do it hurriedly uh, I think we can get it immediately so G prime is already taken this is G prime okay so let me do F prime F prime means uh, differentiate FX will be 4x do we have 4 yes we have 4x here so this is F prime next uh, it is F double prime second derivative of f so second derivative of x will be derivative of this which is just 4 do we have 4 no so there is no f prime x okay g double second derivative of x first derivative is 2 second derivative will be 0 so yes this is the one 0 what about the next one f g plug in g into x f gx basically yeah so f is 2x square 2 gx square basically in place of x write gx what is gx 2x plus 1 2 2x plus 1 square which is 2 and square this it will get a square plus b square plus 2 
a b just like i used one of the previous questions i use this identity so 2 times 4x square do we have 8x square uh, we have here so let's complete this plus 1 plus 4x 8x plus 2 yes it is when i expand this we get this so this will be fg okay gf so inside g i have to put fx so g is 2x plus 1 so 2fx plus 1 what is fx 2x square plus 1 4x square plus 1 we don't have so there is no gf f square f square should be easy so f of fx basically inside fx we are putting another fx okay it is not fx square it is not equal to this right f x square no it is not like this it is f of fx right so we have uh, what is it 2x square right 2 and 2x square square this is what it is in place of x i wrote another f inside it so it will be 4x to the power 4 times 2 8x to the power 4 no there is no f square we failed so next g square inside 2x we will put 2x again in place of x i put its own whole value here so it will be 4x plus 2 plus 1 which gives us as 4x plus 3 that is g square yes g square now inverse of f will be a square root do we have a square root here no need to bother but let's if you want to write it will be what y equal to 2x square and if i want to inverse x equal to 2y square x over 2 uh, equal to y square and if i square root this square root so there is no inverse of x obviously the last one will be g inverse are the same complete the table first row has been completed for you okay so they have not said that we have to show the working but obviously the last one will be g inverse because we have tried every one of them all right b it is given that hx is this and uh, for x is greater than a the value of a is a small as small as possible value of a is as small as possible such that f in h inverse exists what they mean by this please read it very carefully it has to be as small as that inverse of this is available so uh, let me draw this this is a completed square method right we also call it vertex form why we call it vertex form because it gives us the vertex so vertex of this one is negative of what is with x so negative or negative one is positive one and 3 is y coordinate of vertex so 1 3 so 1 2 3 this is the vertex 1 3 now leading coefficient is positive that means the graph is opening this way and this is the vertex right now because this is a parabola if i find its inverse its inverse will be like this Uh, someone like this and uh, something like this now you see this here in this one one x has two y values which is not allowed for a function so what is the minimum value of a x is greater than a right can i have this one as minimum value say this is uh, minus three can i have it no still it will exist like this so i'll keep on erasing some parts so that i get a proper h inverse of this one so should i erase the lower part or should i erase the upper part please think and then we'll proceed that means in original one we have to erase either this one 
or this one which one will give us a minimum limit so if i erase this one yes we have a limit of 1 correct but if i erase that one there is no minimum limit because it is going inverse it is going in other direction limitlessly let me draw it more and more so it will keep on going 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 there is no minimum they said as small as possible so there is no limit so we cannot do this one so what we have to do we have to erase the other one so this is erased and this is the graph that will give us an edge inverse and here i will erase this one so that we have an inverse like this okay so this was just discussion they are just one mark each so we shouldn't have done this but yeah it, this question is very repetitive we should always be sure what we're doing write down the value of a so now we know that x has to be equal to or more than one so a is one what about write down the range of h h means this original function not inverse function so the minimum value is 3 can you see so h is always more than 3 h is always equal to and more than 3 that's what it is write down h inverse x and stated domain now we will write the equation for the one we have decided domain let's write domain first domain you can see it is always above this what is it will change the value here so whatever is the range of here, it is h is more than 3, that will become domain here. So x domain is x is greater than or equal to 3. That means this one is 3 here and this one is 1. The coordinates changed. Now we have to find h inverse. To find h inverse, let me write the equation first, which was hx equal to x minus 1 square plus 3 and whenever you want to find the inverse of a quadratic function completing the square or vertex form is the best way of doing it so this can be written as y equal to x minus 1 square plus 3 right to find inverse we should first exchange the places of x and y x equal to y minus 1 square plus 3 now uh, this y is to be isolated so this 3 will go first x minus 3 y minus 1 square and now we have to get rid of the square by square rooting both sides but we have to take care of one thing that when we square root this side we have to write plus and minus both because square rooting this one will give us plus or minus both and we will be left with y minus 1 equal to plus minus square root uh, x minus 3 now this minus 1 we will bring it to the other side 1 positive 1 right plus minus square root x minus 3 now in inverse we erased a part right this this was like this we erased it so that means this plus minus one of them should go so that we get the positive one here right can you see the the y value for inverse is positive and what will give me positive if i keep this negative sometimes this square root will become more than one and we'll get a negative value that means we have to ignore negative here and answer is one plus square root x minus three because we erase the negative part that is the inverse that is the domain Question 7. A curve has this equation where x is greater than 0. Uh, show that dy over dx is this in this format where a and b are integers to be found. Okay, so we just have to differentiate this. So let me use a product rule for a change. So I can rewrite this as y 2x plus 1 to the power 3 over 2 multiplied by x plus 5 to the power minus 1 okay for product rule dy over dx will be that we differentiate this one first so 3 over 2 and then 2x plus 
1 its exponent will go down by 1 and further we have to multiply it by differentiation of what is inside the bracket which is a 2x its differentiation will 2 multiplied by x plus 5 to the power minus 1 okay so no change in the second part only first one was differentiated then uh, this uh, we, in second one this minus will come in front and make the whole thing negative so we will not differentiate the first part so 2x plus 1 3 over 2 it is untouched this minus 1 I have already put minus here so will it this will go down by 1 x plus 5 to the power minus 2 and further differentiation of what is inside differentiation is just 1 so let's write it here dy over dx will be 3 or this 2 and this 2 can cancel out so 3 2x plus 1 to the power half okay multiply multi, let's write it divide by x plus 5 because it is power minus 1 which I converted from denominator to minus 1 I'll put it back minus this one is positive and the 1 will not make any difference so 2x plus 1 with positive exponent remains here but uh, this is negative 2 to make it positive will make it a denominator okay we are getting something subtracted something but it is not matching with what they want so we'll have to take something common out of these two so this is x plus 5 this is why did I x plus 2 x plus 5 x plus 5 square so what is common in these two x plus 5 so let's take x plus 5 only x plus 5 common this is square here but we have taken this so that means we have to forcibly make it a square and we can't do it as we want so we have to make it square and multiply numerator also by x plus 5 then only it's possible to have a denominator which is a square okay now it is common now we want 2x plus 1 to the power half because half is smaller so it is it makes sense to take 2x plus 1 to the power half as common this was smaller earlier without the power but it didn't it didn't match with this so that that's why forcibly we took square otherwise we always take a smaller exponent as common so what is left 3 x plus 5 this is already out divide by nothing because square it is denominator is square so nothing so minus there is no denominator anymore this x plus 5 square is also out so only look at this one which is 2x plus 1 out of 3 over 2 1 is uh, uh, 1 half is out so 3 over 2 minus 1 half which is just 1 that means it will be 1 here okay so nothing else so which is 2x plus 1 to the power half x plus 5 square and now we can open this bracket 3x plus 15 minus 2x minus 1 so 2x plus 1 to the power half over x plus 5 square and uh, they wanted ax plus b and we get ax plus b 3x minus 2x is just x 15 minus 1 is 14 so comparing with what they wanted a is 1 and b is positive right 14 this is the solution show that there is no stationary point for this curve okay so we'll use the expression we just got we'll use it this is equal to dy over dx yes for stationary point dy over dx should be equal to 0 uh, which is this 2x plus 1 half x plus 5 square x plus 14 okay should be equal to 0 
Now, cross by cross multiply, this x plus 5 will go and multiply with 0 becomes 0. So we are left with only square root. Power half can be written as square root, okay? 2x plus 1 and x plus 14 equal to 0. That means either this is equal to 0, square root 2x plus 1 equal to 0, or x plus 14 equal to 0. This gives you x equal to negative 14. And this one, uh, if I square both sides, 2x plus 1 equal to 0, x becomes uh, minus 1 over 2. Okay, we got stationary points, but look at the condition they gave there. In the question, they said x is greater than and equal to 0, means only positive or 0, and both of them are negative. So, that's why uh, we can write here, since negative half and negative 14 are less than equal to, not equal to, less than 0 or negative, uh, which is out of the domain. of the function there is no stationary point what next find the appropriate change in y when x increases from 1 to 1 plus p uh, interpret this as that x was 1 and the change in it came out to be p because 1 plus p means it increased by p. This is what we are going to use in this one. So uh, for small change, we don't write d y over dx, okay? We write delta y over delta x, okay? Uh, 2x plus 1 to the power half x plus 14 and x plus 5 square. Since the change is very very small we can take the value it started with. So the delta x this one is p so what will this become? Delta y over p equal to now x equal to 1 is to be substituted x 2 times 1 is 2 plus 1 3 so 3 to the power half we can write square root 3. 1 plus 14 is 15 divided by 1 plus 5 is 6. 6 squared is 36. So we can cancel this 3 times 5, 3 times 12. Okay, so delta y by cross multiplication p goes and multiply with this 5. So we get 5 square root 3p over 12. This is the answer. The approximate change in y which is delta y. Okay, we have one more. Given that when x equal to 1, the rate of change in x is 2.5 units per second, find the corresponding rate change in y. Again, we will exactly, we'll use exactly same, but this time the change is not small, so dy over dx will remain dy over dx. So dy over dx is equal to and when I substituted 1 in this part, if you remember, we, I got 5 square root 3 over 12. Right? But this time they are saying the change in x is 2.5 units per second. They have involved time now. So to involve time, we divide by dt and divide by dt up and down. And change in x is this one, dx over dt, which is 2.5 units per second, will be the denominator now. dy over dt over 2.5 equal to 5 square root 3 over 12. And cross multiply again, dy over dt will be 12.5. Uh, let's let's 2.5 can be written as 5 over 2, right? 
so 5 over 2 times 5 square root 3 over 12 25 over 24 square root 3 let's move on to question number 8 A sixth digit number is formed from the digits 0, 1, 2, 5, how many are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So which one is missing? 1, 2, 3 and 4 are missing. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So there are 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. There are 8. And we want to form just six digit number. A number cannot start with 0 because it will become a five digit number either otherwise. Okay. And each digit can be used at most once in any six digit number. Find how many six digit number can be found if there are no further restrictions. So that should not give us any trouble. Always draw six spaces, one, two, three, four, five, six, right? And because there is a restriction at the first one, so we will say that out of these eight, only seven can be used here. Yes, because zero cannot be. And now, and next, because we have used one of those seven here, we are left with six plus zero here in the second one. So we can write seven. And since we can use them only once, they keep on going down by, just multiply these and you'll get your answer, which is 17,640 combinations. Okay, what about next? Find how many of these six digit numbers are divisible by five. So to make the numbers divisible by five, the last two last digit should be either zero or five. But the problem is the first digit cannot be zero, right? So what do we do? Because zero is creating trouble, let's take the scenario with only zero. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 0 is the only one option on this particular unit digit, right? Now we can go to the first one because there is a restriction here that 0 cannot be used. But 0 has been used. That means all other 7s are available for this. Then 2 are used. 0 is used here. 1 number is used here. So 6 are left here. 5, 4, 3 and don't make this part of calculation. It was just an indication that 0 is at unit place. So, how much is it? 42, 20, 840, 19, 20. No, 25, 20. Mistake. 25, 20. All right. Now, second case when the unit digit has 5. So, that is the only option here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 is this. Now, the first digit cannot be 0 and 5 has been used here. That means there are two lesser available here now. So 6 are available here, but 0 is available for this one now. So it will again be 6. Then 5, 4, 3. How much is that? 36, 180, 720, 2, 1, 6, 0. So if I add both of the cases, it will be how much? 4, 6, 8, zero combinations possible moving on to the next part find how many of these six digit numbers are greater than eight five zero they are six digit yeah eight five eight hundred fifty thousand okay so what are the numbers let me list the numbers once more zero uh, one two three four is missing five six seven eight and nine and uh, out of these eight, we have to fill up six spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Uh, to make it greater than 850,000, that means first digit should be either eight or nine. But there is a problem. They said 850,000. That means with eight, we can have only five and above here. So. Again, just like previous, we separated 5 and 0. We'll separate here 8 and 9. So let me separate 8 here. Let me write 8 is the only option here. Right? Now I want more than uh, 
five or more than five here, right? Then only it will become 850,000, more than that. So uh, I can have five, six, seven, and nine. Eight has taken this place. So we have just four options here. Five, six, seven, and nine, right? And then we can have any digit after that because it is zero, zero, zero. That means we can take any, any one, including a zero. So uh, two digits has been uh, taking place the here so remaining will be how many six five four and three how much that is 24 120 480 times three is one four four zero let's talk about nine if we have nine as the only option here there are no no restrictions about next digit because nine hundred thousand will have any digit, even zero will work here, right? So we don't have to worry, all seven can come here, remaining seven, because they are total eight, nine has taken up this place, so it can't be written again. So seven here, six, five, four, and three. So how many then now? Seven times six, 42, 210, 840, same, two, five, two, zero. So add them, three, nine, six, zero, is the total number of combinations possible here. Okay, okay, we have B part also. A team of eight people is to be chosen from 12 people. 12 people are there, we have to choose eight. Three of the people are brothers who must not be separated. Find the number of different teams that can be chosen. So they may not be separated means either they are in the team or they are not in the team. So uh, without them, if we remove these three from here, we'll be left with nine people. Okay, so yeah, it's possible to keep them, all of them out. So uh, let's say here, with brothers, the team with brothers. So all three are there in the team. So, they are confirmed, 3C3, they are confirmed, 3C3 is 1 actually, there is no need to write it, but I am writing it. But remaining 9 people, we can choose, choose only 5 now, because 3 has been already there, the brothers are already there, only 5 to be chosen. And that will be something, I will evaluate later. Second, that they are not in the team, so they are out, right? So now, second that team without brothers. In that case, nine people are available and all eight are to be chosen from them. And nine C eight is nine, that's what I know. N C five, let me five, nine C five. It is a 126. So we add these two, we get 135 different teams can be chosen. All right, what is next? Question number nine, solve this trigonometric equation, okay? So it's about cosecant square. So cosecant square is not in our calculator, so we'll have to do something here, nothing else, nothing, else. okay. So cosecant is a reciprocal ratio, right? It is always the reciprocal of sine theta. So cos theta, in place of cos theta, we can write sine theta. That means along with angle, three is not reciprocated. Three will remain where it is. It can be written as sine square two phi minus pi over three is equal to four. We cannot evaluate sine unless it is a numerator. So it has to go there. So let's bring it there and bring four here. So it becomes three fourth equal to sine square two phi minus pi over three. Now to find sine, we'll square root this, we'll square root this. This is square and square root cancel, but here on the left side, we'll have to write plus and minus both. So it becomes a square root three over two plus and minus equal to sine two phi minus pi over three. 
Now, since it is being the angle is being multiplied and a phase shift is also there, it is called a phase shift. We have to do something different. First of all, there are plus and minus. Sine is plus and minus. That means all four quadrants have the solutions. So, if we put uh, two phi minus pi by three equal to sine inverse square root 3 over 2 and we don't write plus or minus here anymore because we know that answer is in all four quadrants so don't worry about sine anymore just sine inverse square root 3 over 2 we should give you an acute angle and i know this is pi over 3 so pi over 3 here pi over 3 here pi over 3 always the horizontal line only okay this is how we get it and you should know that this is 0 this is pi this is pi by 2, this is 3 pi by 2. But our answer has to be between 0 and pi, but both are not included. Right? But I said it's a strange. Because of this multiplication and this subtraction, we should cross the limit. I call it cross the limit means don't stay 0 with 0. You can go beyond 0 in negative side and you can go to positive side beyond pi also. That will give you an answer but one thing you have to make sure that this is negative pi over 3 means it's subtracting so if i go in negative uh, it is chance that it will be further subtracted in negative zone and we will not get the answer but we should not take any risk so what should we do we should start with negative pi by th this one negative pi by 3 in this direction which is not in our domain but let's see does it help or not so first First solution I'm finding here, 2 phi minus pi by 3 is equal to negative pi by 3, right? So, yes, this and this both are negative pi by 3, cancel out. 2 phi is 0, so phi is 0, but unfortunately, it is not part of the domain. There's no equal sign here, so we cannot accept this one. There's no point going more negative because we'll get lesser than this answer, which is not acceptable. All right, let's go to second, which is pi by 3 here, yeah? So 2 phi minus pi by 3 equal to pi by 3. So 2 phi equal to pi by 3 plus pi by 3. Yes, yeah? this also becomes positive when it goes to the right side. So 2 phi equal to 2 pi by 3. We can divide both sides by 2. And cancel phi is pi by 3 which is well within our domain this is the first answer okay third it is not third part of the question okay I'm just producing them separate them 2 phi minus pi by 3 equal to all right next angle will be this up to here which is pi by 3 less than pi Yes, so pi minus pi by 3. So they cancel. Both are negative pi by 3. So 2 phi equal to pi divided by 2. So phi equal to pi by 2 is second answer. Now I will cross the limit again. So I'll go into this zone. Maybe this will give us another answer. So 2 phi minus 3 is equal to this angle is pi by 3 more than pi. So pi plus pi by 3. 2, did I write 3 here? It should be pi by 3. So 2 phi equal to pi plus pi by 3 and more pi by 3. So 3 plus 2, 5 pi by 3. 2 phi equal to 5 pi over 3 divided by 2 divided by 2 and yes 5 pi by 6 is less than pi less than pi and that's why it is also acceptable there was a benefit of crossing the limit here 
Let me do the fifth one also, though I'm sure because 5 pi, 5 pi by 6 is very close to pi. So this will, may not give us an answer, but let me try and try this one also to be on the safer side. So fifth, 2 pi minus pi by 3 is equal to, uh, this is 2 pi also, so 2 pi minus pi by 3. Cancel. Oh yeah, divide by 2, divide by 2, cancel. Pi is pi. But again, unfortunately, pi is not part of the domain. So that means this is also rejected. So our answers are 1, 2, and 3. These three are the final answers. Okay, let's move on to B part. Given that 2x minus 1 is equal to cosecant square theta, y plus 1 is this, 5y in terms of x. In other words, they're saying correlate cosecant square and tan square. So how can I? I can do this. Cosecant square theta is 1 plus cot square theta. That's an uh, identity. It will be given to you in your formula sheet but we have to connect with tan not cot but we can do what uh, we have another identity cot theta is 1 over tan theta reciprocal of tan so that's what I'll do here now so cosecant square theta is 1 plus 1 over tan square theta because cot is square so tan will also be squared this is what I will write in place of this cos square so 2x minus 1 equal to 1 plus 1 over tan square theta. Correct? And now tan square theta is known to us. So we'll write 2x minus 1 equal to 1 plus 1 over y plus 1. That's what tan square theta is. And okay, we want y in terms of x. So let's bring this one first here because y is to be isolated. So 2x minus 1 minus 1 equal to 1 over plus y plus 1, 2x minus 2. Can we take 2 common here? 2x minus 1, can we take in common? Equal to 1 over, okay. Now y should become a numerator and this should become a denominator because y is to be isolated. So y plus 1 equal to 1 over 2x minus 1. This is plus 1. This will come to the right side and we get our answer. y equal to 1 over 2x minus 1 minus 1. Can you somehow make it same? Let's, let's see if it becomes so we can write this one as 2x minus 1 over 2x minus 1 so 2x minus 1 and what do we have here 1 minus 2x plus 2 yeah so 2 plus 1 3 minus 2x nothing is common okay we can leave our answer as this Moving on to question number 10, which is the last of this exam. So what does it say? Show that this combination of three uh, rational terms can be written as this. I don't think this should challenge us because we can find their LCM, which is exactly this 2 plus 3x, 2 plus 3x. Yeah. So we can combine them 2 plus 3x, x plus 1 square. This is the LCM of these three, right? Now, the first term has 6 on top. So write 6. 2 plus 3x is already here. That means it needs to be multiplied by this. So x plus 1 square. So what I've, I've done basically, I'll undo this later. This was like this. I multiplied this by x plus 1 square so that the denominator becomes this. And I have to multiply by x plus 1 square also so that I don't change the rational expression and they cancel out. And this 6x 
plus one square is here and this denominator is here and the same thing will happen with each one of these three terms. So this is what I'm going to do now. Plus four. What do I need? X plus one square is there. That means it needs this part. Two plus three X. Third one. Minus two. It has just X plus one. That means it needs one more X plus one to make it square and we need two plus three X also. And that's it. We have to simplify this and we'll get our answer. 2 plus 3x, x plus 1 whole square. Let's open this one. 6, uh, x plus 1 whole square will be x square plus 1 square plus 2 times x times 1, 2x. Plus 4 times 2 is 8, 4 times 3x is 12x minus 2 and let's open this x times 2 2x x times 3x plus 3x square 1 times 2 is 2 and 1 times 3x is just 3x okay 6 times x square 6 times 1 6 times 2x plus 8 plus 12x minus 2x and 3x is 5x and multiply by minus 2 is minus 10x. Minus 2 times 3x square is minus 6x square. Minus 2 times 2 is minus 4 over 2 plus 3x. The kind of questions, uh, question this is, it is very easy because the target is known to us. So even if we make a mistake, we can correct it later. So 6x square is cancelled with 6x square. 12 plus 12 is 24 minus 10, 14x. 6 plus 8 is 14 minus 4, 10. And we got what they wanted. Shown. What next? Hence. Find the exact value of this. That means this is our this part. That means we can change our question to the question which was given here. So uh, 6, 4, minus 2. 6 plus 4 minus 2. This was 2 plus 3x. This was x plus 1 square and this was just x plus 1 yeah and we have to integrate from 2 to 0 so it will become from 0 to 2 dx so i'm separating all three whenever we have a linear denominator and a constant on top or just one we, it becomes very easy. So let's different, uh, integrate it straightforwardly. We just write the natural log of what we have at denominator. 6 will be untouched. So we'll write 6 here. We have to further divide it by the differentiation of what we what was the denominator. So differentiation of 2 is 0. Don't touch it. 3x is 3. We can cancel this here. Okay. Plus now let me do this one because it is not a linear denominator anymore it is different from the first one so we can write this as x plus 1 to the power minus 2 i'm not looking at 4 right now so to make to integrate this add 1 and divide it by the same exponent we just got and further we have to divide by what is there inside the bracket it's differentiation what is differentiation of x plus 1 just 1 this is what it will be here so that means we don't need a positive sign here we'll get a negative why because minus 2 plus 1 is negative 1 negative 1 times 1 is negative 1 so this will become negative 4 was already here and then we have x plus 1 to the power how much minus 2 plus 1 negative 1 denominator has been taken care of by with this negative Minus 2 is already there and again we have a linear denominator so len 
x plus 1 divided by the differentiation of okay let me write it differentiation of x plus 1 is 1 so it's pointless but still let's write it from 0 to 2 and now we have to evaluate by just putting this two in place of x's so first one uh, this two is a co coefficient let's make it a exponent that's the logarithmic rule so it will become natural log 2 plus 3 times 2 square because 2 became exponent here minus 4 over 2 plus 1 yeah this is negative ones so to make it positive I make it a denominator minus 2 okay oh sorry this 2 can also become the exponent so natural log 2 plus 1 square plus C and we have to sub, uh, substitute 0 as well so natural log 2 plus 3 times 0 square minus 4 times 0 plus 1 minus natural log 0 plus 1 square plus c first thing first c should be cancelled out what is here uh, natural log of 6 plus 2 8 square 64 actually minus 4 over 3 then it is 3 square is 9 negative natural log of 9 minus three, this is 0 so 2 square is 4 this negative will make this negative positive so 4 over 1 just 4 minus no positive again this negative and negative lin 1 square is 1 lin 1 is 0 so again ignore this what will what are we left let's combine the ones which are natural log 64 because 9 lin 9 is subtracting that means it will divide with here and lin 4 is also so it will also divide but multiply with 9 then we have uh, 4 minus 4 third will be how much uh, 12 minus 4 8 over 3 so finally what do we get yes we can cancel this natural number 16 over 9 plus 8 over 3 this is the final solution of this question I hope you like this video if you did please like this share with your friends subscribe to my channel and motivate me to make many more videos like this uh, I will very soon prepare other videos on other parts of IGCC math. Thank you very much.